It's BBC Radio Oxford now for a bit of psychological thriller. The world's two most famous actors are kidnapped. They awake, bound and bruised, with no inkling of where they are, unable to move. They are at the mercy of those who adore them the most. Their fans. Ah, that sounds really scary. Uh, that's the story behind a new film. It's called At The Great Charade by Oxford filmmakers Rodeo Whiter and Dan Strange. Uh, soon to be Mr and Mrs Strange, in fact. Uh, Describe this film as Silence of the Lambs meets La La Land. And uh, they're both here. It's nice to have you here. And actually, I mean, not only are you putting the finishing touches to the film, but you're also organising your wedding as well. Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Well, c- congratulations <laughs> on both counts. So this Thank sounds you. this sounds interesting. Psychological thriller. Are those the kind of films that you want to make, Radio, the, the, the kind of films that you've always dreamed of making? Um, I think we wouldn't be able to make a nice film if we tried, so I think we're going to have to stick with the psychological <laughs> stuff. Now, why is that? I mean, with the surname, like, strange, I guess it all figures, <laughs> but <laughs> you're not into sort of, you know, chick flicks and things like that? Oh, we watch a lot of rom-coms at home. We're kind of terrified of horror films, and we hide behind cushions and, you know, cuddle up and watch rom-coms, but we just can't write them. <laughs> I think Love Actually, the DVD, is almost worn out now. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> We've seen it so many times. Um <laughs> yeah, everything nice we try and write turns into horror. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've discussed a few little ideas, um, but yeah, they they don't sort of go anywhere apart from death. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're really nice people, actually. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. oh, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> so how how did how did all this happen? Because you wouldn't be making films, and you wouldn't have made all the sort of the, the short films that you've made had you not met one another. Indeed. So how did how did that happen? If we literally go back to uh, to when you met and how all this began in the first place. So I'd been freelancing for a while since I was about fifteen, and I eventually went to SAE to study film, uh, which is the university just in Littlemore, and that's where I met Dan because he was on the audio course. So naturally, I needed someone to do audio for my films, <laughs> and I sought him out because he had a reputation of being the best audio person on campus. Uh, he'd only seen something... I don't know where that reputation came <laughs> from, but... Yeah. So yeah. You, you made it your mission uh, to, uh, to, to to meet him and then, of course, love blossomed and then you decided actually to become a partnership in, in life and work. That's Indeed. A, what, a, what a beautiful story. You should, you should make that one. Yeah, that would be way nicer. <laughs> that would be yeah. a lovely rom-com. <laughs> <laughs> so, and how long ago was that then? Uh, four years for yeah, four years I think, about four years ago, something like that. Yeah. So you yeah. got you got together, and then you started making. I mean, ultimately, you like telling stories. So ultimately, you started making short films together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we met on a short film, Flutter, that was that won a couple of awards over a couple of festivals. Um, that's where Rodeo sort of met me and uh, introduced herself, and she said, oh, "I want you to do the sound on this one." And my reaction at the time was. Oh, if I have to. Um, <laughs> but then I worked with Rodeo, and I really liked working with her. Worked on another one, Rocket Man, as well, on uh, doing on set audio. And then it just gradually built and built from there. We did more and more, and we did a lot of commercial work as well. Mm. And, and you've been you've been internationally recognised as well, haven't you? I mean, your your short stories, the short films that you've made, you know, they they have been uh, highly acclaimed. Indeed, yeah, they've been to festivals around the world. So, yeah. How do you make a short film? I mean, if you compare it to making a feature-length film, which, of course, you know, this is the first foray for both of you into feature length, but but how does it compare? Is it like, perhaps to use an analogy, the difference between, you know, writing a novel and then and writing a short story? Probably. Or writing a poem and writing a novel? Yeah, I would. I would probably go with the short story and a novel, I think, because we, we've written a few short stories we tried writing a novel a little while ago um we just didn't have the time to finish it all Uh, the patience yeah all the patience (laughs) yeah that wore very thin Mm. but but also you've got to quickly establish when you're doing a short story you've got to quickly establish characters haven't you so how, how do you do that how do you translate the the and how do you establish characters when you're making a short story I think it probably makes it easier if you kind of have them mapped out in your head and you discuss them with your actors beforehand and then all of the little nuances of the character can come through in their portrayal of them and a few kind of little kind of pointers in the script. But it's really nice doing a feature film because you can make them so much more juicy and all of the 
uh, all of the issues they're facing and all of their actual character traits can be much more apparent kind of throughout the story. A great example of that is um, like if you look at Quentin Tarantino, the uh, dialogue that he puts into his films where they're having a conversation about tipping the waitress or something like that, you can gain so much of that character and those characters through that one conversation that at the time mm. seems quite sort of... Well, he's quite dark, convenient. Quentin Tarantino. Is, is he sort of a filmmaking hero of yours, Dan? Uh, we cer- I mean, we certainly like his films, but... So who would you cite if I said, you know, who are your heroes? You know, what kind of films from directors would would you like to make? Personally, I love David Finch's work uh, because the storylines are so messed up and kind of you never expect what's going to happen next. But he also has a way of making them kind of, I suppose, visually keep you guessing as well, which I really love. I think Mm. that's really cool. So making a film then, I mean, this is no easy task. It's a massive project, isn't it? So you, you you write the script... Mm-hmm. And then what happens? What's the process? So with this one, I think we we first discussed the idea when we were in the car and a certain song came on the radio and the idea kind of... What was the song? Uh, it was I Can't Decide by the Scissor Sisters, actually. So I think Dan turned to me and said, what if we made a film about someone trying to decide whether to kill people? Because obviously the lyrics of the song are a little bit messed up. Um, Had you proposed at this point? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I knew you what know, I was going to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so, right, so, this, so the, I, these ideas for things, you know, often come about like this. So you had that conversation and you quite liked Dan's idea? Yeah, so I kind of immediately, I kind of thought about that for a moment and then I said, okay, what if they were two famous people that were kidnapped by one of their fans and he was deciding whether to kill them? And from there, we kind of got into this discussion and we went home. And within about three days, we had the first draft of the script, which was quite a feat in itself because we'd spent about a month writing another script beforehand. Um, so this clearly was it was meant to be. This was the right one. Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it came flowing out. And then, and then what happened? So you're, you're happy with the script? Yeah. So I think the next step was we invited two of our kind of most trusted, uh, trusted friends and colleagues over. Uh, that's Sam Ashby and Will Tullett, and we sat down and had a reading with them. Um, and from there, we kind of thought, okay, yeah, this does have legs, having heard other people read it to us as well. Because mm. um, that's sort of the endorsement that you know that, that you need, isn't it, to actually? Because if you you might think something's great, you know, your mum might think something's great, <laughs> but then actually, when you know other people that are unemotionally involved with you think it's great, then then you know you've got something. Mm, yeah. So then, then <clears throat> how does how does it develop from there? Uh, so from there, we already knew kind of roughly who we wanted to cast in it, having worked with a few of them on short films before. Um, so we immediately got in touch with them and said, we have this slightly disturbing script that we'd like you to read. Uh, there was only one character that we had to actually go and seek another actor for, um, which ended up being quite a mission in itself, really. Uh, but once we had the cast, we could set some rehearsal dates. Uh, location scouting is always tricky. Um but we managed to find one just in the, you know, on the edge of time. Especially trying to get an American-looking location around Oxfordshire. <laughs> that is, that was a difficult. task in itself. Yeah. But you found one. Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, we found a great location at Jennings, um, and we realised that we had to cover up all the sockets on the walls, so we had to cover those in interesting and creative ways. Uh, but yeah, it looked great in the end. And then yeah. you start shooting it and it starts to come to life. That must be really exciting when you see that. You see something just lifting off the page and being brought to life. Yeah, it's really exciting working with the actors that we were working with because we didn't think the film could be as dark as they made it, but we also didn't think it could be as funny as they made it as well, uh, which was really interesting for us. Yeah, that was quite a surprise. We kind of... We'd written a few bits that we thought were slightly comedic in a bit of a tongue-in-cheek kind of way, but actually seeing them perform them, and in particular Candice Palladino, who played one of the antagonists, she has a real kind of knack for comedic timing, and it just, it was hilarious. We were just in hysterics on set. It was four <laughs> o'clock in the morning, and we could not stop laughing at this one line, and it's literally about two or three seconds of the film. And it took us over an hour and a half to shoot. Mm. 
that one little bit because she was so funny. So how, how long though in its entirety did it did it take to shoot? Because now you're you're a couple of days at what into the final edit. You've started that now. Yeah, that's right. So that that's a that's quite a job I would imagine, as well. But um, but, but in terms of shooting it, how long did that take? Uh, only a week actually, uh, because the film is all set in one location and there's no kind of time elapsing in between scenes. So essentially it is all one scene that's just really long, uh, which meant that we had the luxury of shooting it chronologically as well, uh, which was really nice for the actors because it meant that that helps, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. um, Definitely a luxury. Uh, But yeah, we were able to shoot it all in one week. Um, Very hectic week, very tiring, but we did it. Mm. What about money as well? Because making a feature film, you know, it's, uh, it's quite a costly affair, I should imagine. Well, we had money, then we made a film, and now we don't have money. <laughs> that sums it up. Yeah. <laughs> but actually, I mean, there is, you're excited about this, and there is quite a lot of excitement because there are quite a few distributors who, who, are, who are interested in this, Dan. Yeah, uh, yeah, we have had a lot of interest from big distributors, which we weren't expecting at this stage, but I'm how, how does that not come, How does that come about? Because, of course, you know, you're going into the final edit right now. So how do you, do, you, do you approach them? Do they approach you? How do they get to know about this film? They've all found us, haven't they? I think they've all found us through... They've seen what we, do, what we, what we are doing and what we have done on social media or YouTube or whatever. Um, and Francesca Louise White has put us in touch with a few contacts as well. So... Yeah, it's just all sort of grown out of that, really, and getting to know people. So how long do you give yourself, then, to to do the final edit? So we're aiming to get it done by March, actually, including audio. And then what happens to it? Uh, Then we seek out some more distributors, and we kind of have proper final conversations with anyone who we're talking to. Uh, Obviously, they can't really make a decision until they've seen the final edit, especially given that it's our first film, so they don't necessarily have anything to go on. So the fact that we're actually talking to them right now before we've actually got a final edit is... It's unusual. Yeah, definitely. Very. Well, uh, Oscar's uh, 24th of February. Uh, perhaps in years to come, uh, Mr and Mrs Strange will be uh, sat in the auditorium. Indeed. <laughs> Maybe nominated for an award. I mean, is, is that what ultimately you would like? You'd like an Oscar? You'd like... I mean, who, who would you cast if, if you had a free reign to cast any actor in one of your films? Who would that be? In fact, give me two. A leading, a leading lady, a leading man. Leading lady, I'm, I'm going to say Jennifer Lawrence. Oh, I was thinking of her. Nice. Yeah. Why Jennifer Lawrence? Uh, she, she's a great actress to start off with, but she's... <laughs> First and foremost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, she just, she just seems fun and like a genuine sort of person. But also and could sort of do the, the, the kind of part, uh, the, the, the kind of, uh, certainly sort of get involved in this sort of film that you like to make, The Dark... Yeah, yeah, messed definitely. up films. Going on her performance in Mother, I think she'd be ideal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what about Leading Man? Possibly George Clooney. <laughs> I quite like him. Yeah, George Clooney. Yeah, all right, let's go with that. <laughs> and he's a really good actor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, the wedding's coming up, of course, isn't it, later this year? You've got an yeah. awful lot on. I wish you the best of it. Do keep in touch, won't you? Because uh, we'll be uh, certainly watching out uh, for the great charade. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming in. Thank good luck you. with the Thank final edit. Much. Thank you very much. Uh, Rodeo and Dan Strange. BBC Radio Oxford.